I'm on dual destinies. Athena here. In case you missed anything, I'm here to fill you in on this case. Our first witness is a cardboard box? The tabloids have hit the courtroom, and Apollo and I did some fact-checking on Skelebutt's false narrative. The witness didn't actually see the body. What we actually have here is evidence of someone trying to frame our clients. Don't let it go to your head just yet. What other lies can we unpack from her story? And what sources can we use to shift the blame away from Junie? The trial continues today from Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. Next! <laughs> Sorry, Miss Scuttlebutt, but doesn't believing you had a scoop when you really didn't make you a failure as a reporter? Uh, failure as a reporter? <laughs> <laughs> Why, hello, Miss Scuttlebutt. So nice to meet the woman beneath the box. <laughs> you didn't see nothing! Objection! Now, I would have you stop right there, Sykes Dono. For it is the why of the matter upon which I would have this court focus. What do you mean? Miss Juniper Woods! Yes? <laughs> what were you doing on the morning of the mock trial? I was in my dressing room, <coughs> painting my costume in fluorescent paint. Fluorescent paint? My design drawing shows twinkling stars in the costume. <coughs> I was going to make the costume shimmer like that by painting the inside fluorescent. Fl what was that again? Fluoride? Did your costume have cavities? Not fluoride. Fluorescent. As in glowing. The paint would make it glow in the dark. <laughs> yes, yes. So you applied that to the inside of the costume. And then... I let it dry for a while because I heard it takes a long time. So I put the costume on my mannequin inside out. Inside out? So then... This is a photograph of the inside out costume taken in the dark. As you can see, there is a heavy layer of paint over the entire inside surface. If someone were to properly don this costume in this state, the wet paint would get all over their body. Why yes, I believe it would. Indeed, ergo the costume was worn the way it was, not by anyone's mistake. But because this was the way it was on the mannequin, inside out, <laughs> Figures he would have a photo. Uh, did we just fall into his trap? Uh, yeah, I bet Blackwell had it all planned out. Still, I think you should give that photo a nice long look. Please tell me you found something that doesn't add up. Huh? Check out the chest area. Kinda looks like a handprint to me. Hey, you're right! But Junie would know better than to touch it while the paint was still wet. Objection! I believe the term to describe your thought process is wishful thinking. After all, if master painters make mistakes, why not a rake amateur such as the accused? Objection! So basically, you're saying my claim requires evidence to back it up? Evidence? <laughs> that shouldn't be a problem, right? After all, you've come this far. Just because I've come this far doesn't mean I've thought everything through, though. What? You mean you've just been bluffing? What did you expect me to do? I'm sick of losing to this guy. 
But you're right. There's only one thing left to do at this point. And that's to present some evidence. Pronto! A showdown, is it? I gladly accept! The fluorescent paint must have stuck to the hands of whoever touched the costume. And that paint should glow in dark places. So I just need to carefully check every last piece of evidence. This piece of evidence shows who touched the costume. Okay, carefully check the evidence. Right. Wait! Take that! A school newspaper? Interesting. Take a look at the photo where the lights are dimmed and the spotlight is on Ms. Woods. Observe Mr. Newman's hand in that photo as he stands at the prosecutor's bench. As you can see, it's glowing, just like Miss Woods' fluorescent paint. Ah, it is glowing. Quite brightly, I might add. But why would he put fluorescent paint on his hand for the mock trial, you may ask? The answer is he wouldn't. Not on purpose. It got there when he put the costume on. Oh? Uh, I mean, oh. Uh, that means... Uh... What again? It means the figure photographed in the costume was not our client, Juniper Woods. It was her classmate, Robin Newman! What? To think you were actually able to prove that. Well, you never know what's going to happen next. That's the thrill of the courtroom. Huh. So then... Does that mean that Robin is our man? Hmm, well, that's certainly how it looks. Hmm, very well. Robin Newman it is. Is he in the gallery I trust? Show yourself. I challenge you to a duel. Will the witness please state his name and occupation? I'm Robin Newman! I want to become a great artist! I practice day and night! Yeah! No! That's not it! Art's gotta be sincere, man! So, for occupation, should we put down budding artists? No! Themis Legal Academy Senior Prosecutor Course! This brace is proof of my masculinity! I've been training to be a prosecutor for 18 years! Ahem. I assume you will be cleaning up the pottery you smashed before you leave today. It seems the witness has finally settled down. I guess nothing faces the judge after all these years. You may proceed with your testimony, Mr. Newman. Specifically, the court wishes to hear why you had fluorescent paint on your hand. I went to see Juniper in her dressing room! She wasn't there! When I walked by that frilly costume, I was like, whoa! The mannequin it was on, it was about to fall on me! I got that paint on me when I caught it! But I never put it on! That's just stupid! Hold it! Your Honor, I recommend a short therapy session for the witness. Well, Mr. Newman does seem particularly agitated, but... No! Not again. What's his problem?
I sensed it the moment Robin took the stand. The discord in his heart. So you think he might be hiding something? Probably. You ready, Mr. Newman? Let's see what the Moon Matrix can do for you. Initiating audiovisual reconstruction. I went to see Juniper in her dressing room, but she wasn't there! When I walked by that frilly costume, I was like, whoa! Got it! When you mentioned the stage costume, I sensed a sudden, powerful feeling of joy. Would you care to explain, Mr. Newman? Wait, what? Why would a frilly scarf thing and long skirt make me feel like that? I don't know, but you seem awfully interested in that costume for some reason. You didn't happen to put it on, did you? Why could I be into that kind of thing? I'm a dude! I'm into braces, not dresses! You don't think Robin likes girls' clothes, do you? Oh, come on. Isn't it obvious? You're enjoying this a bit too much, Athena. No way, man! The mannequin came falling towards me, so I stuck out my hands to stop it! End of story! That's a new piece of information. Time to run an update. Airball update. Hmm. Even after that update, something just doesn't feel right here. Do I have anything that could prove his statement contradicts what really happened? Wait a second. Hands don't work that way. Take that! You said the mannequin came falling towards you, so you stuck your hands out to stop it. If so, then the fingers of your hands would have been pointed outward like this. But that's not what the handprints show. In fact, this looks more like just your thumbs and the base of your palms. Why in the world would I leave such weird handprints? You know why. You left them when you went to adjust the scarf after putting it on. Just like the model in this drawing. Whoa! Why don't you just admit it, Mr. Newman? You did put the stage costume on, didn't you? And you really do like frilly clothes, don't you? Fine! I admit to putting the costume on! But! I don't like girly clothes! Man! Noise level reduced. Yes, new information to plug in. Time for another update. I snuck in, knowing the costume was in there. My heart was pounding, even though I'm a guy. Then I saw it. It was even more amazing than I'd imagined. I was like, whoa! I'm a guy, but I got all excited. Got it! There. Another emotion that doesn't fit. So what? You're really starting to get on my nerves, man! Mr. Newman, you got excited when you put the costume on. But you also felt sad. Who cares if I felt sad? It's no big deal! Okay, Mr. Newman, out with it! Why did you feel sad? You're hiding something, aren't you? Uh, no! You're not fooling anyone anymore. Now tell us why you were sad. Okay, fine! If you're gonna be that way, I'll tell you! The reason I felt sad is... 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 Yeah! No matter how much I dress up, I'll never be as pretty as Juniper! Well, no offense, but for one thing, he's a guy, and a real hothead at that. Ah! No! That's not it! I totally own those girly clothes!
clothes. I should have been totally pretty. But, but there's something that keeps getting in my way. Wow, that's a whole lot of anger and raw emotion right there. His heart is crying out in pain. His emotions are out of control. Out of control emotions? We saw those during the Nine Tails Veil vale incident. So all we have to do is find the source of his uncontrollable anger, right? Right. Help me look for a conflict between his statements and the images we see. If we can find that, we can wrestle him away from whatever's tormenting him. Mr. Newman said there's something getting in the way of him being pretty. Something that doesn't go with girly clothes. But what could it be? Fine! I'll testify! Man! Noise level reduced. Warning! Emotional overload detected. I snuck in knowing the costume was in there. My heart was pounding, even though I'm a guy. It's true! I felt a powerful feeling when I saw that long, frilly scarf! I admit it! I wore girly clothes! Info update. I felt like a diva when I pulled the hood over my head! It felt so right! I was totally dressed up like a girl! not angry about the costume. He, he chose to put it on, so what else is there? It's the brace! It's the brace! Got it! Mr. Newman, you feel a great deal of anger towards your brace, don't you? Is that what you feel is holding you back from being as pretty as you think you should be? Huh? W what? Mr. Newman, the truth is, you really want to take that brace off, don't you? No way, man! This is a symbol of masculinity! I could never take it off! Is it that you can't take it off, or that you don't want to take it off? Aw, oh, man! I should have kept my big mouth shut! This is really weird. He exhibits intense anger toward his brace, which he calls a symbol of masculinity. But he can't take it off, even when dressing like a girl. And why is he so interested in girls' clothes in the first place? I have a feeling we're on the verge of uncovering an earth-shattering secret. Athena, you okay? Seems Robin is still holding a secret. A big one. Bigger than the fact that he likes to wear girls' clothes? Yes, at least I think so. No, it can't be. I just thought of something, but it's totally insane. Mr. Newman! What?! I'm on to your little secret. And if I'm correct, it's not very little at all. It's huge. This sounds completely insane, but it's the only possibility left. If I'm wrong about this... Mr. Newman, or should I say, Ms. Newman, you are and always have been a girl. What? Have you lost the plot, Athena? No, I'm completely serious. I don't have any direct evidence. But that's what Robin's heart is shouting out, loud and clear! Hold it! I still think you've totally lost it! I mean, Robin reeks of testosterone! How could he possibly be a she? I, for one, have never seen a girl who shouts like a maniac all the time, disregarding my ex. I've seen plenty of witnesses in my day. But if he's a she, then she's the most convincing actress I've ever encountered. Therefore, let me pronounce my verdict. 
Robin Newman is without question a man. <laughs> you are now truly just as Dono's equal in one area. You are just as equally insane. Never in the history of this planet has there been a finer specimen of the masculine spirit. Miss Sykes? No, allow me to call you Athena. I wanted to keep this a secret at all costs, but no. What? No way! <laughs> Surely this must be some kind of jest. <laughs> nope, it's for real. I'm a girl, body and soul. If you don't believe me, I'll give you a P E E K. Ah! As if! <laughs> what an amazing transformation. Well, all the Discord is gone. The image is now complete. Info update. Level reduced. Analysis complete. Bye bye. I was raised as a boy since I was little, and I studied law just like my parents wanted. But now, this living lie that had me pinned to the ground, it's. Turn out to be a she. Eek! Why is everyone looking at me like that? <laughs> I feel like a movie star or something. But no paparazzi, please. I value my privacy. Okay, A Y. Ah! No picture, you'll regret it, Brad! Am I just imagining things, or is Robin even more hyper now than when she was a he? I don't know. Maybe it's because she finally got her troubles off her chest. Literally. This is all well and good, but does he being a she actually change anything? The fact that the witness is actually a girl does change things. Because there's now a piece of evidence that we must reevaluate. Huh. Uh, very well. Let's see what the defense has for us now. What piece of evidence must be reconsider now that we know the witness is a girl? Take that! This is what I'd like the court to reconsider. Oh, a tape recorder. The one that's recorded the threat. You're a goner. That's right. We've already established that it's a female voice in the recording. Of all the students who could have moved the body before the mock trial was to start, our client was the only female, if you exclude Miss Scuttlebutt because of her alibi. 
and that is why the tape recorder made our client the prime suspect. Ah! Uh, so then... That's right. The witness just revealed that she's a girl. Therefore... If we are using the voice in this recording as basis for hurling accusations... This witness must be labeled a suspect too! Wow. Talk about a sudden turn of events. You've done it. You found a hole in one of the prosecution's key pieces of evidence. Yeah, but... Wow. That was a lot of work for a single one. Objection! How many episodes did this take us? Not so hasty now. You're forgetting that only one person here was privy to a script. Ergo, Miss Judith Woods is still the prime suspect. Objection! But Ms. Newman hid the fact that she was a girl, both at the crime scene and in court. I'd say that puts her in camp suspicious. <laughs> That's not nice, Athena! How can you accuse me of being a killer? I mean, I'm just a weak, innocent little girl. Just thinking about that murder. <gasps> Objection! Hmm. <laughs> suspicious is as suspicious does. Undoubtedly, the witness does have some sort of connection to this crime. Perhaps our newfound lady is merely feigning ignorance. We can surmise that she lent support to the principal offender, Juniper Woods. By leading Miss Scuttlebutt to the body, that would make her an accessory to the crime. How can you say that? I'm not an accessory to any crime, Mr. Birdman! Objection! B Birdman? In any event, with the witness as an accessory it explains quite a bit, does it not? It all makes sense somehow. And he'll keep accusing Junie unless we can show someone else knew the script's details. But how could someone have gotten their hands on that kind of info? The only way they could have known what was in the script was if they... Sorry, Junie, but you're not going to like this. Our client may have leaked the script's details to someone. What the devil? And I know I shouldn't have, but... I revised the script to favor the prosecution. But Professor Court noticed it immediately and changed it back. Ms. Woods did not want Hugh O'Connor to win the mock trial. That's why I believe she leaked the details to the witness, Robin Newman. I get it. If Robin won, he wouldn't be able to confess to Juniper. Right. Junie was probably trying to keep their friendship from becoming awkward. Objection! <laughs> How could you, Athena? What a bunch of bull! I... I... I never heard a word about the script from Juniper! Objection! You sure? Can you look me in the eye and swear you didn't? B-A-D, Athena! You don't have any evidence! <sighs> Actually, we might have just the thing. Really? Yeah, one of Robin's lines I read when we were reenacting the mock trial. Here's a shot of the crime scene. Ironically, it was Professor Court who posed as a corpse. Her forehead. How did the mock trial participants react to this photo? Mr. Newman was surprised by what Professor Court was wearing. Robin said, oh, the green sweatsuit. 
R E. I might have said that, but. So what? Well, think of it this way, Athena. Y yeah. Uh, which way exactly? If I told you that I'd be wearing a blue suit today, but then showed up wearing what I've got on now, what would you say? Um. Oh, the red suit. I think I've got it! Let's do a project! 